Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am reviewing the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palettes. I bought all of them and I also have her lipstick and lip liner in sorcery. So that's kind of what we're doing today. Now I've decided to split this video, that way we won't be here for two hours, in order for me to really review a palette, do an eye look and show you guys how you know these work, I felt the need to do multiple videos. So I will have probably three or four different videos on these palettes. I've decided to mix the Cinnabar and Muse together because I think those are similar enough and they're more kind of everyday and I wanted you to guys to see a comparison on those two palettes and I think for the rest I'm going to do an individual um, video. I hope that makes sense but I will do a playlist that way you can access any of the other palettes that you're interested in. So without further ado let's get started. I am going to start with the lipsticks because I need something on my lips. So I have here the Sorcery Lip Liner and the Velvet Lipstick. Now, I love this formula. It is one of my favorite intense mattes. However, I've had issues with her matte lipsticks breaking on me. This one right here is not broken and hopefully it will stay that way, but it is absolutely gorgeous. I think we all know by now how stunning these look. They look like they have velvet on the outside and the formula is extremely creamy, but very pigmented. Also, I really love her lip liners. The reason I don't use them a lot in my videos is because I haven't found my perfect nude lip liner, but this is a good one. I have swatched it and this is the color right here. They are so pigmented, so creamy, but they last a long time, which is quite rare to find that combination. So that is the lip liner, and then I'm gonna swatch the lipstick. This is the swatch, the top one is the lip liner, and the bottom one is the lipstick. Now I did a quite a heavy swatch here, but I'm gonna blend that out so we can see kind of how probably I would end up wearing. So I'm gonna start with the lipstick. I'm kind of gonna do a light layer of this. I'm gonna use my finger to buff it out. So this is a light layer with this lipstick and on me it pulls more pink than on the swatches. I was slightly hoping it would be a little bit more brown and um, you know in general with Lisa Eldridge most of her lipsticks pull quite pink on me. I still love it. I still think it's beautiful um, but maybe a little bit more pink that I was hoping for. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lip liner on real quick. Now that I added a little bit of the lip liner, you can definitely see that it's getting a little bit deeper, a little bit more of that brown that I've been wanting. I'm gonna go back into the lipstick and just intensify it a little bit. I still don't want to swipe fully because it still has so much pigment, but I want to intensify a little bit. Now applied this way, I absolutely love this color. I think it is so beautiful. It has a richness to it. It has more of that brown, mauve cool tone, and it's like more of a medium color. It's not a nude for me. It's not super deep. It's just perfect. I love it. It is probably going to become a go-to for me. I will most likely mix it with a little lighter one. I may put maybe fawn on top of that just to make it a little lighter. That way the eyes will be the focus and not the lips, but wanted to show you guys this uh, combo and usually I don't buy the matching lip liner with a lipstick from Lisa Eldridge. To me, they seem quite similar and I almost 
feel the need to pull a deeper color when I mix her when I use her lipsticks. But this time around, I feel like the, the mixture between the lip liner and the lipstick is really nice. It's not too different, but it's just a little deeper. So I'm gonna go ahead, put a little bit of fawn in the center or intrigue, and we'll move on to the eyes. Moving on to the eyeshadow palettes. Now, she came out with six different formulas throughout her eyeshadow palettes. You won't find them all just in one eyeshadow palette, um, but she has a seamless matte, a velvet, a metallic, a luminous duo, a top coat, and a luster. Now, I will not go into details about this. I will link her video, Lisa Eldridge's video, where she explains and goes through the process of creating the uh, different textures, the different, you know, a velvety mats and all that because she does such a good job at explaining it and I feel like I'm just gonna butcher it. And I feel like you probably guys have already seen her video if you're watching this. So I'm gonna start with the color Muse and the color cinnabar in this video so these are her palettes this is the box that it comes in absolutely gorgeous and then when you open it it actually has a really cute uh, packaging inside as well i thought that was a little nice touch and this is the eyeshadow palette it is stunning so this is more of a smoother matte gold, and this has these lines and ridges in it, but it, it feels very nice and luxurious. And in the back here, you have the holes where you could poke out the eyeshadow and swap it um, with a different one or move it in a different palette if you want to. When you open it up, this is what you get. You get six shade, you have this plastic, um, a protector and then a nice size mirror and this is lighter than you think it actually feels quite light this color is the cinnabar and this one right here is the color story muse I think the first thing I've noticed is definitely that these are lighter than you expect. They still feel nice and luxurious, but they don't have that weight to it. Um, like I mentioned, you can pop these out and she kind of goes into her video in details about, you know, being able to mix and match. The only issue that I have is that she does sell these individual, but she doesn't sell the package. Um, so if you're ordering one and then two other shades, you don't have where to keep those other shades. And the way they're packaged, it's it doesn't seem protective. Like you're gonna need to store those somewhere safer. So that's my only beef with this. I think I want to say eventually she's gonna bring out um, just a palette by itself. It just makes sense. But for now, you don't have that option. Um, yeah. Let's get swatching. So these are the two palettes side by side. And I would say that these are the most neutral ones out of the bunch or the most similar ones. Let's start swatching with this one right here. This is Raw Sienna, I hope. <laughs> I think I'm reading it right. And I'm gonna swatch it right up here. Oh wow, that is a very creamy, guys very very creamy this one is the seamless matte and from what i understand this has very tiny little uh shine through it that way it makes it that creamy and i feel like it does have a slight sheen to it it is incredibly soft almost creamy to the touch and i love that color all right moving on to bronzite which is a metallic and it's this one right here that is the color bronzite and it is kind of like a nice bronzy color. I don't think it's anything crazy. It's nice and pigmented, but it's smooth at the same time. Moving on to Fired Earth, it's this one right here. Oh, oh wow. That feels so soft. There we go. Ooh, wow, these mats are incredible. This one really does feel like velvet. It is really nice. Slightly reminds me a little bit of the Tom Ford Creme Formula. A little bit. This one more than the top one. 
Oh, I'm excited. I knew the mats are gonna were gonna be nice, um, but I didn't expect them to be this creamy. Moving on to Lost Summer, which this one is a metallic as well. That one is Lost Summer. I actually really like that name. It's a nice kind of basic color. It's deeper than I expected from the swatches. It's probably because I'm just really fair. Moving on to Deep Ochre, which is a velvet. This is how this one looks like, gorgeous. Ooh, I'm excited I have all these beautiful mattes in here. Last one is Ritual, which is a top coat. And she said that this is kind of very soft. Um, it's not chunky at all. And I wasn't expecting her to have anything chunky. So this is the top coat. I don't know if it's even picking up on camera, maybe like this. Let's compare it to Muse. We are gonna start with um, Tea Room right here. This is also a velvet matte. Tomorrow's Party is right here and it doesn't look metallic, but it says it's metallic. I don't, I don't think this is metallic. Yeah, that looks matte to me. I wonder if they put it in the wrong way. Let me see. I think mine is a little bit messed up. I want to say that that is maybe vintage uh, mulberry. I think they probably swapped them. I bet this one right here is tomorrow's party. I'm trying to look on my phone. And it seems like this one would be um, tomorrow's party. And this one right here, probably vintage mulberry. Let me rearrange them. I rearranged them and this is how it should look like. Okay, so I swatched that one, which is uh, vintage mulberry here. Let's swatch the middle one, which is tomorrow's party, and that one is a metallic. This is a nice rosy pink, not too intense, and it's not too shimmery. These metallics seem to be very smooth and Honestly, Lisa Eldridge, because she doesn't use a ton of intense glitter like Pat McGrath. She always has like a smooth uh, look. Even when she does use those top coats, they're very elegant and soft. Okay, moving on to this one right here, which is Love in Venice. And this one is a luminous formula. Let's see the difference. That one is Love in Venice. Honestly, to me, that looks less pigmented. It almost looks like it has a tiny bit more glitter than the other one, but it's extremely soft and barely there. I don't know if on the eyes you're going to be able to tell the difference. Um, a bit underwhelming, that color, honestly, unless you're really into super soft looks, um, but we'll see it on the eyes. Cherry Bum, which is a velvet, this middle one right here. I'm so excited about the velvets. They look incredible. Ugh, and they just, they swatch so well. They swatch like a cream. So that is that beautiful velvety color. And I love that tone. And then moving on to Taffeta Fan, right? This is a luster shade or glitter shimmer. And it seems like this one is just more intense than the other ones. Just a little bit more sparkly. So these are the swatches. This is the color Muse and Cinnabar. And they're quite different. This is very pink and this is very warm and bronzy. Let's start with Cinnabar. And I'm taking this one right here, the Raw Sienna. And I will be putting this in my crease. That is a very soft crease color for me. I actually love this. I could see myself using this pretty much every day and even go through a color like this. It's extremely soft. It's. I feel like if you're deeper than me, I don't think it's gonna show up on you. But if you're my skin tone and a little lighter, it'll give just a little bit of shading, but nothing more. I am going with this one right here. This is Deep Ochre. I hope, 
and I'm going to intensify that crease a little bit more. Is this the velvet? Yes, this is the velvet formula. And he's blended extremely, extremely easy. Wow. It's not that I wasn't expecting this from her, but um, yeah, the mattes are incredible. Very soft. Did you see that blend? Like I barely had to do anything. Okay, nice. Um, I think I'm going to try to use them all just because why not? Um, and let's see between these two shimmers. Let's put this one right here. This is the bronzite. I'm going to put it on the first half of my lid. Okay, these, this one's intense. It's a very soft um, shimmer, but it's intense. Like it packs a punch. That's, that's actually really nice. I'm going to take this one right down here, with the, which is Lost Summer, and put it on this outer area right here to see how those work together. I think they're different, but definitely one has more pink in it. I'm going to take my brush and just blend those two together. Um... But I think they blend into each other nicely. I'm not sure if I need them both. I'm going to add just a little bit more here. I think that one kind of went away a little bit more. Like the second I started uh, blending it out, going in with that blending brush, it kind of did fluff away. And so I'm going to go back with my finger. It seems like the finger is the best way to put these on and then I'm going to just tap it on the outer area. I am going to take Lost Summer right here and put it in my inner corner just to brighten that up or not. It's a very light. It, it doesn't even show up. Let's try a brush. Okay, it shows up a little bit better with a brush and I'm going to just pull it inwards right here to blend those two colors a little bit this is very light maybe too light for my preference as a kind of topper i'm going to put it in the center as well just to kind of see how it does i'm going to take my finger and put it right here in the center i think it brings a little bit of light but it's a very, very faint. It's not intense at all. So that is the Lost Summer shade. I do think it brought a little bit of attention there and just barely their light and reflection. I think it's a very elegant, very feminine. I think anybody could wear that color, even if you're more mature, more mature, if you have any wrinkles in your eyes, I think, or on your eyelids, I think that you are able to use that easily. Okay, on the lower lash line, I'm going to take this one right here, Deep Orker, and smoke out the lower lash line a little bit. And now I'm taking Fired Earth, and I'm going to use this pretty much as a liner on the top lash and lower lash line. This one works really well on the lower lash line right now. It gives me a lot of definition. That's pretty. I actually want to take a little bit of that and just darken up this look, taking that again. And I want to see how this dark color blends into the crease. So I'm just going to pull this slowly up just to give a little bit more that's really pretty so it seems like with these mattes they're so soft and blendable but you have to build up the color which i like i prefer this over like super intense right away i think it's harder to work that way all right, let me put my mascara on and I'll come back and show you the finished look. So this is the finished look. I put Cinnabar on and I used the lip liner from Sorcery and I think it works really, really well. But this palette, you know, has the same name as the Cinnabar and I thought 
I would just combine them. So this is the finished look. Overall, I think it's a very soft look, even though it has color. It has that more intense bronze color in it. And on me, it shows up quite a lot. I do think you can use the rosier bronze instead of this one, and it will give you a bit of a different tone. It's not going to be quite white as orangey. It's going to be a little bit more of that, you know, rose gold kind of shade, but I do think those colors are quite similar, at least on the eye. They kind of blend it into each other. I'm going to swatch them side by side right now. So these are the colors. Obviously, there's a difference there, but like I mentioned, when I was blending them on the eye, they were similar. Uh, I still like it. I think next time I probably would just use one. Uh, next time I do want to use the rose one just to see how it looks by itself. The mattes are incredible. Absolutely obsessed. I think what I'm going to do eventually is just create one palette full of her mattes because I think they blended so softly. The shades are beautiful. They're neutral. They're not too warm and they're not too orangey. This sienna color on me looks so good just as a no makeup makeup kind of look. I feel like I could put that one all over the lid with my finger, put a little bit of this deep ochre, 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 I don't know. Um, in the crease or like on the lash line and be done and maybe this topper on top of it. So I think the palette overall performed incredible. This topper is extremely soft, so be aware of that. This is no Makeup by Mario toppers. This is not even Charlotte Tilbury toppers. This is even softer. And I think there is going to be a lot of people that will enjoy this because it's just more daily friendly. Um, it works on any age and it won't emphasize your wrinkles at all. I think it's going to work really well over wrinkles. To me, is it the most unique? I don't think the metallics are the most unique. I think the mattes are the most unique. Absolutely. Almost the most blendable mattes that I have ever worked with. So yeah, that is a Cinnabar and let's move on to Muse. I'm gonna change my lipstick to the Muse lipstick. That way, um, you know, we can really see and then put this eyeshadow on. Let's start with this one right here. This is very light and it seems very peachy pink. This one, again, if you have deeper skin tone, it may just pick up more light, like it could go really well all over the lid. I actually kind of want to do that to see how that would look like. I'm just prepping my eyelid with this color. It's very soft. It barely shows up on me, but it does, it does give a tint of pinkness to my eyes, right? Moving on to this one right here, and I will be building this one up here in my crease. Pretty much this is going to be my transi transition shade. Again, these mattes perform really, really well. It's quite soft. Even this one, I actually really like this color. Kind of reminds me of Pillow Talk a little bit, one of those shades from there. It's it's really pretty. It's nice and soft. Okay, I'm trying to think all over the lid which one I want to go. I mean, I'm going to use them both because I want to show you both, but probably normally I wouldn't use them both. I'm going to take this one right here. This is the Tomorrow's Party. I'm going to put it on the outer area right here. I really like that this has a mirror. It's so practical. And this is very, very soft, incredibly soft. Dare I say too soft, like the of the color, it doesn't show up a ton. It's like a wash of color, but it's pretty. I think it makes sense for kind of what the palette is. Okay, let's take this one right here. This is Love in Venus, I think. I'm confused now with the names. And I'm going to put this one on the inner part. 
Okay, this one is even softer, but I do like this one. I feel like it has a, 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 a soft sheen to it. It's not... I can see just a wash of glitter, a wash of sparkles. I wouldn't even call them glitter. But it's so light that you have to probably be in direct sunlight or at night so you can actually see that. But those blend into each other really nice. I'm gonna take the deeper one and just combine those two colors. I am gonna go in the deeper shade and use that on my lash line. So when I was deciding which one to pick, this was the one that I was not gonna pick. I just don't gravitate towards these pink colors. It just seemed too maybe simple. And even though I wear simple makeup, I don't wear pinks much. And then I think I'm gonna take this one on my pinky and just kind of add in here. Going in with the mulberry color right here, I intensify that lower lash line. And just blend it out. I think it's just similar looks, just different colors. Much softer though. I can definitely see the spot sparkles a lot more right now at least in this light um compared to the other one i'm gonna try to add a little bit more here because i actually do like that color a lot it's soft and light but i like it i'm gonna take this color right here and this is not a topper this is more of a just shimmer a bit brighter so you can see that that one has more pigment and it has a base to it. It's still kind of, let's swatch it so I can tell. Yeah, it's, oh, it almost looks metallic, just more intense. It has a more sparkle to it. I'm going to take the same shade on the inner corner and put it here. Let me go put mascara on and I'll show you the finished look. I put mascara on and this is how we're looking like. I kind of want to take this deep shade in, on a fluffy brush and really try to go in there and deepen up that outer corner and see how that blends out. Of course, it works really well. Um, I just kind of wanted to see how that one would perform. All right guys, so this is the finished look. So this is the Cinnabar look. And this is the Muse look. So as you can tell, they are very different. The Muse is a very pink, a very feminine, very soft. There's nothing harsh about it. There's no actual glitter. Even the topper or like the lightest color, which is not a topper, it is a luminous shade. So it's more pigmented than the metallic, but it doesn't have much actual sparkles in it. The luster, this is what I remember and like how I see it. The luster has more base and more of sparkles on it rather than the top coat. I think you have to play with the formula to kind of see the difference between them. But I do think the luminous and the metallic are quite similar. Um, so I think the mattes are what shines in these both both of these palettes. I think they are just so wonderful and incredible, both of them, the, the Muse one and the Cinnabar. Um, obviously with the Cinnabar, you can probably tell a little bit more how easy it was to blend just because they were a little more pigmented. With this one, obviously it's very light. Um, I think the first couple of shades, they kind of barely even showed up on me. And I think that was made intentional. Now, when I look at these, I don't see these revolutionary, incredible, mesmerizing eyeshadow palettes. I see really good, basic eyeshadows for everybody. Um, the shimmers, like I mentioned before, they're almost too basic, at least in the Muse. This one right here, I just felt like it was just okay. They're very smooth, very smooth, very flattering on just the eye overall. It almost looks like a beautiful 
very um, barely there metallic soft shimmer to the eye. Um, I did like this one. I thought it showed up more than the other ones and the formula is much creamier and almost feels like it's not harder, maybe harder pressed. It's a different formula. It feels creamier and almost stickier. This one right here, I do think it was a little bit more unique. It was not super intense, but it had the sh kind of s soft sparkles through it. And I, th I like that color. I actually really like that right down here. I think that's Love in Venice. I'm trying to look at my phone because it's confusing me the way they wrote them. Um, Again, the mattes, I absolutely love them. I think the shimmers in here is just okay. Um, I don't think it's anything crazy or revolutionary. Um, I, I, I see where she was going with this because that's just how she does makeup. You know, I was expecting that. And I think a lot of people will enjoy this because it's not too much of anything. It's not too sparkly. There's not a lot of fallout. You still get different textures, but they're not extremely different. Don't expect to have these super sparkly texture and then a smooth metallic and then this luster. They kind of blend into each other and they seem similar on the eyes, at least these colors right here. Now on the Cinnabar, I definitely think you could see a different texture in these. Um, the mattes, again, incredible. I love them. I, I will see myself using the mattes in here so much. And you get two metallics, right? Yes, two metallics and the top coat. And the top coat definitely is a little bit different. It's very soft, um, barely there. I mean, I had to go in with my fingers multiple times and you can barely see it. Um, I do think it gives like a little bit of life to my eye and a softness to it. And the light kind of barely catches it. And which is exactly what how she described these. That like you won't really notice them until the light like hits them. Um, so I think overall the quality is really good. You just need to know what to expect. For 60, what was it? $68 US. The mats, yes. Yes. The shimmers, it's just fine. And it hurts saying that because I love Lisa Eldridge. Like she's somebody that I look up to and all that. Uh, and I don't think it's bad. I just think for that price, I probably would be a little disappointed receiving this um, and expecting something just more. At least these colors. I've read that the other colors are a lot more intense. And I do think that there's a place for people that uh, just want basic, easy palettes. I think this will be wonderful and I will use these. I know I will use them because of the mattes. The mattes, the mattes are incredible. I, I think they blend in, they feel so nice. Both of them, the velvet and the whatever other matte, it's confusing me. The seamless matte, they both perform really well. Honestly, I don't see a huge difference in it, but um, I really like them. They are wonderful. So that is all for this video. Go check out the other videos because I have a feeling that those are going to be a little bit more interesting, more pigmented, more fun colors, and I'm excited. So I will see you guys in my next video.